from the White House uh, be leading some sort of investigating team, or will it just be up to NASA to investigate this? All this is, is very, very early, and there's just nothing we can say. Our, our immediate concern is the, is the crew. Questions will just have to be deferred was until much about, later. Was anything said about the fact that the, the teacher was on board this plane? Well, it was something that was, was on all of our minds, that, that, that we did have the first teacher in space, uh, really the first uh, uh, civilian, so to speak, other than our members of Congress who have flown. Uh, in space, and certainly that's on our mind. Are there any scientific aides who have been able to say that they could survive such an explosion? With Just don't have that kind of information yet. Yeah. The uh, vice president, Matt Poindexter, informed the president. How did the White House learn about it? Uh, I'm certain that we probably learned it from the news media, as we do many times when th uh, incidents like this uh, occur uh, unexpectedly. Why does this influence the decision about? That was White, White House, House spokesman uh, Larry Speaks uh, speaking live from Washington. As you, uh, if you have just joined us, the space shuttle Challenger has crashed into the Atlantic Ocean, and at this point, there does not appear to be any survivors, uh, seven astronauts on board. Here is the incident itself. This is what happened. A short time ago. T minus 15 seconds. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. We have main engine start, 4, 3, 2, one and liftoff liftoff of the 25th space shuttle mission and it has cleared the tower good roll program confirmed challenger now we're watching down here range. a replay of the launch of the space shuttle challenger a short time ago a mission short-lived that has apparently ended, ended in disaster and explosion a little more than a minute into the flight. Most of the flight, 104 percent. We'll throttle down to 65 percent shortly. Engines at 65 percent, three engines running normally, three good fuel cells, three good ACUs. Velocity 2257 feet per second. Altitude 4.3 nautical miles. Downrange distance 3 nautical miles. Engine throttling up. Three engines now at 104%. Challenger, go and throttle up. And there we see the explosion just after NASA told the astronauts aboard the shuttle Challenger to go at full throttle up. And there you see the strange configurations of the, the smoke and uh, the burning shuttle. This is the 10th flight for the shuttle Challenger. And again, the first time there has been an accident of this type uh, after the launch from the Cape. Let's go now to the uh, Houston uh, Space there you saw it, uh, a very tragic incident as the Space Shuttle Challenger uh, tried to lift off unsuccessfully this morning from Cape Canaveral. Uh, Challenger was a uh, $1.2 billion spacecraft. It's uh, one of four in the Nassau fleet. Uh, this one uh, making its 10th flight and uh, a very unsuccessful launch this morning. And uh, we must repeat again, at this point, we still have no word on the fate of the seven astronauts on board, of course, included among them Christine McAuliffe. She is the first NASA citizen in space. She is that uh, school teacher from New Hampshire who uh, captured the hearts and minds of a good many people uh, around the world as she uh, prepared for this mission. And again, as yet, no word on the fate of any of the seven astronauts on board. The actual incident itself took place at one minute and 12 seconds into this mission. It came at a very crucial time. At that point, when the uh, Challenger was moving up and climbing into orbit, it uh, was going to separate its main tanks uh, from the uh, actual shuttle uh, unit itself and at that particular moment it was also the time when the maximum number of forces were working on the shuttle Challenger itself from wind and upper atmospheric conditions and the weather of course has played a significant factor in delaying this particular mission this morning they actually had to de-ice part of the shuttle Challenger and the base in order to uh, get this mission underway another possible quantum uh, uh, confusing factor for NASA officials today the effect that this weather was going to have 
on the new launch pad that was used for this particular mission. So they were uh, working with the uh, new facilities. It was a clear blue day, but very cold uh, by Florida conditions. And uh, so the uncertainty at this point, uh, we're still uncertain, of course, exactly what did happen. But uh, as you can see, recorded earlier, a good deal of uh, sorrow at the uh, NASA space headquarters in Cape Canaveral. Let's uh, join now as uh, NASA officials uh, give us this message. Uh, completion of the roll program and uh, throttle down and uh, engine throttle back to 104%. Uh, at that point, we had an apparent uh, explosion. Subsequent to that, uh, the tracking uh, crews reported to the flight dynamics officer that the vehicle uh, appeared to have exploded and that uh, we had an impact uh, in the water downrange at a location approximately 28.64 degrees north, 80.28 degrees west. At the time the data was lost uh, with the vehicle, uh, according to uh, a poll by the flight, uh, flight director Jay Green of the positions here in Mission Control, there were no anomalous indications, uh, no indications uh, of problems with the uh, uh, engines or with the SRBs uh, or with any of the other systems at that uh, at that moment uh, through the point at which we lost data. Again, this is preliminary information. Uh, it's all that we have at the moment, and we will keep you advised as other information becomes available. We had uh, there are recovery forces in the general area, uh, others being deployed, including aircraft and ships. We uh, saw uh, what we believe to be a paramedics uh, uh, parachuting into the uh, impact area. And we have no uh, additional word at this point. We will keep you advised as uh, details become available to us. This is Mission Control, Houston. And just to recap, if you have joined us, the Challenger crashed shortly after liftoff this morning from Cape Canaveral. We have word now that para paramedics are in the water just a few miles offshore from Cape Canaveral. They are looking for survivors, but as we have reported earlier, at this point there appears to be no indication that anyone has survived that crash. The uh, exact time of the incident, uh, approximately uh, now, NASA officials are saying, uh, 60 seconds into the mission, uh, somewhere between a minute and a minute ten. A very crucial time for the Challenger as it lifts off and uh, heads into orbit. It was at that particular point when the solid rocket fuel boosters were supposed to separate. Uh, just uh, before that happened, uh, viewers around the world were able to see uh, a short uh, burst of flame and uh, then the explosion following immediately. Let's recap it for you. This is what happened uh, just a short time ago at Cape Canaveral as the shuttle Challenger lifted off. Good roll program confirmed. Challenger now We're watching down here range. a replay of the launch of the space shuttle Challenger a short time ago. A mission short-lived that has apparently ended, ended in disaster and explosion a little more than a minute into the flight. And there we see the explosion just after NASA told the astronauts aboard the shuttle Challenger to go at full throttle up. And there you see the strange configurations of the, the smoke and uh, the burning shuttle. This is the 10th flight for the shuttle Challenger. And again, the first time there has been an accident of this type uh, after the launch from the Cape. Let's go now.
There were several delays in uh, getting uh, this particular uh, mission off the uh, launch, launch pad in Cape Canaveral. Large icicles were actually uh, forming on it this morning, and NASA officials are now trying to determine if uh, the weather, the ice, and uh, the adverse conditions may have been a factor uh, in this disaster. Um, NASA officials also expressing some concern that the vibration of a launch might send some of these icicles uh, crashing into the shuttle, damaging uh, some of those very sensitive uh, heat protection tiles. There was also a report this morning of a faulty gauge that uh, may have uh, caused some concern for NASA officials, but after four delays, they were determined to uh, put the Challenger into orbit, and so they went ahead. And just a note on the mission itself that uh, these seven astronauts uh, were looking forward to. They were going to uh, launch a satellite that was going to do a good deal of study of uh, the Halley's Comet. And they were also going to uh, carry out uh, some other work uh, related to uh, space communications. Uh, some of that work was classified, as are many of the uh, uh, portions of missions that are carried out by the shuttle crews. The, uh, of course, uh, from the White House this morning, word from President Reagan. He was in a meeting at the time of the uh, actual explosion. He was called out of that meeting and uh, went to a television in the White House. His aides uh, report that he was simply, quote, stunned by the explosion that took place this morning. We are uh, going to try and keep, to, uh, keep you up to date throughout the day on developments as they occur. But again, to uh, recap for you, at this, word, at this point, there is no word of any survivors from that particular crash. Well, as you've just heard, uh, some confusion certainly at Cape, Cap Cape Canaveral. And joining us now, Senior Editor Lloyd Robertson. Lloyd, a very tragic development in the uh, history of the NASA program. Dave, indeed, a tragic one. And, of course, uh, at this particular time, the first woman, the fir not the first woman, but the first uh, civilian ever to go into space uh, is on that craft, Krista McAuliffe. Uh, a grim anniversary was celebrated just a few days ago, the anniversary of the explosion in 1967 when uh, an Apollo spacecraft blew up on the ground, killing three astronauts. This is the first major disaster to befall the U.S. space program since that time. So, uh, as uh, you heard a few minutes ago, we're having trouble getting actual information on this because uh, there's a lot of speculation going around. One thing uh, I have heard is that it uh, was at the time of the separation of the external fuel tank. And uh, we are not certain whether that uh, external fuel tank actually managed to separate from the spacecraft. That was about 90 seconds into the flight, and there was this huge uh, explosion. So what we're following is uh, a disaster of enormous proportions here to befall the American space program. Um, Mission Control said pieces of the multi-million dollar 100-ton spacecraft uh, came down into the water about 28 miles downrange from the launch site on what uh, otherwise, we understand, was a picture-perfect launch. No hint that there was anything wrong this morning. There had, of course, been uh, numerous delays, delays because of weather, delays because of small technical glitches up to this time, but nothing very serious. And the briefings uh, coming out of Cape Canaveral are not telling us very much at this point. We know that there are recovery ships in the area. Now, there were due to be uh, two recovery ships in any case uh, around that point uh, to, uh, to look at the uh, separation of the rockets. But uh, at this stage, nothing has been recovered, uh, although we understand that uh, we won't hear much until it is determined that all pieces of the spacecraft are in the water. And that could be some time yet. Uh, President Reagan, in fact, uh, in Washington, was holding a briefing this morning uh, with media people for the State of the Union address, which is to be given tonight, and if that is still the case. And uh, he simply canceled the meeting, uh, went into the next room, uh, turned on the television set uh, with his advisors, and stood there stunned uh, watching this uh, horrible situation that uh, was happening at Cape Canaveral. Now, these are pictures of the uh, Space Shuttle Challenger crew uh, going, uh, getting ready to board the spacecraft this morning. The names, the bottom name, Krista McAuliffe, the school teacher. And just mentioning uh, President Reagan there, he was the one who decided several years ago that um, a civilian should go up very soon into this uh, space shuttle program. And he said uh, it would be a good idea that a school teacher should be the first one. So it was his idea, and this uh, has undoubtedly struck him pretty hard this morning, especially just before uh, a major address uh, to, the, uh, to Congress tonight. Uh, we understand from Washington that that is all that is happening. Everybody down there is uh, gathered around television sets uh, just uh, waiting to get word from Mission Control as to what is actually happening. And Mission Control is, at this stage, silent. 
Lloyd, we uh, can uh, at this point uh, put a human dimension to uh, this tragedy in space. This uh, spectacle, a shocking spectacle, was seen by millions of people around the world, uh, but it was see also seen by 1,200 students at McAuliffe's Concord High School in New Hampshire. Krista McAuliffe, the uh, woman on board the uh, shuttle team. Uh, the launch was te televised uh, inside the school. All 1,200 teach er, students were there. And uh, as it became clear that there was an explosion, the stunned students murmured, this can't be real, uh, we can't be watching this. Students who were gathered in the auditorium were then ordered back into their rooms. Many of them went reluctantly, protesting that uh, they wanted to be allowed to continue watching. So uh, a personal uh, dimension to the uh, tragedy that has befallen the uh, Space Shuttle Challenger uh, following its liftoff this morning. Lloyd? Yes, the other aspect of that you were talking about, uh, Christine McAuliffe, she was to have given two lessons uh, from space, two 15-minute lessons to about uh, 2.5 million uh, school children uh, all across the United States. Uh, now, of course, Ottawa is uh, tuned into the news. Uh, members of the House of Commons are now beginning to get word uh, of what has happened. We know that uh, Prime Minister Mulroney is possibly on his way uh, to the uh, lobby of the Commons at the moment, so we may be hearing from him. Uh, a Canadian has gone up successfully in the space program, of course, Commander Mark Garneau, and uh, another one is, uh, is about to go up in the space program for a second time. So uh, in this particular case, uh, no Canadian is directly involved, but because we have had uh, an involvement in the space pro program that uh, is quite a commitment up to this point with our own astronauts, um, Canadians are undoubtedly watching with great interest what's uh, going on in Cape Canaveral this morning, as are people all over the world. This uh, particular disaster uh, comes uh, close to the anniversary of uh, another one that uh, befell the space program uh, in 1967. But it's a remarkable, day of just how few real problems there have been um, up to this time, when you consider that anything can go wrong at any point in that flight, especially um, as is the case with all flights, on liftoff and uh, on return. Lloyd, it's, it's really quite a remarkable record uh, for the NASA people to, uh, to have carried it off successfully as they have. But uh, there has also been some concern expressed over the past couple of years. For example, Lloyd, this year they were shooting for a record 15 launches from Cape Canaveral. And some NASA officials early last year, when uh, budget considerations were paramount in the minds of NASA officials, were expressing concern at that time that they might be trying to do too much and that perhaps safety and other considerations might be downplayed somewhat. We don't know, of course, at this point how much of a factor that might have been in today's tragedy. But this was the second of a record 15 launches for this year. And uh, Lloyd, from my own experience, going back to uh, the shuttle uh, when it came down for the first time, the Challenger, uh, in uh, California, concern even at that point uh, from the impact of those launches. It's, it's like a controlled crash when, when you think of that huge space shuttle plummeting down out of the sky and landing on the desert. Experts at that time uh, within NASA and experts outside were wondering just how much punishment, if you like, these aircraft could take. And uh, you have to be aware that this was the tenth mission for this particular space shuttle. A lot of experts were asking two, three years ago, how, just how much can these machines take? How much work can we get out of them? Well, considering the fact that uh, Columbia was brought down um, late, and uh, of course they were attempting to keep the, the program on schedule, there, there was a lot of talk about uh, economic considerations. And um, the feeling is that, that perhaps um, uh, the, the budget cuts, uh, the, the schedule that you mentioned, all of these things compounded have put a lot of pressure on the space program, but those are not the kind of people who show pressure publicly. That's right. you know, the idea is get the job done, uh, get it done the best way we know how, uh, do the job for, for the nation, and don't worry about the sidebar effects. Uh, so the result of this um, could be um, the build-up of, of the flights, um, one on top, of, uh, virtually one on top of the other, well, and we're, the economic we're, considerations. We're talking about people here, as the book said, who have the right stuff, Lloyd, and certainly uh, there was no other, there's been no other group of uh, people in, uh, I guess, the history of, of the U.S., or recent history, who have been more committed to a particular uh, project than, of course, the NASA experts. Uh, we are, we are uh, going to be here for a while, and at this moment we are waiting for... Uh, Prime Minister Brian Mulroney, who is um, 
perhaps uh, going to make himself available for a statement on this. Uh, we also have word from Washington that President Reagan, uh, as the word says, is uh, expected to say something in a little while, considering this uh, the enormous uh, scope of this tragedy. We want to go back now for just a moment, uh, for those of you who are tuning in to this news, uh, to explain just what happened earlier this morning. The flight, um, now Dave, you were in the newsroom all morning. There was a delay, was there not, there uh, was originally? A de there was a delay this morning of a couple of hours before they, uh, before they managed to uh, get into the countdown. This is it, Lloyd, uh, as uh, millions of people around the world saw it this morning. And Liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. Roll, Good roll program confirmed. Challenger now We're watching here range. a replay of the launch of the Space Shuttle Challenger a short time ago. It's now into this mission at a critical point when the uh, solid booster rockets were supposed to separate. Explosion, you see, possibly coming up shortly now, a small burst of orange flame and then disaster strikes. And there we see the explosion just after NASA told the astronauts aboard the shuttle Challenger to go at full throttle up. And there you see the strange configurations of the, the smoke and uh, the burning shuttle. This is the 10th flight for the shuttle Challenger. And again, the first time there has been an accident of this type. Uh, spacecraft or any space shuttle, uh, that, that whole exercise in the part of the mission is very critical because there is simply so much fuel and mm -hmm. so many things that can go wrong at that point. Uh, NASA throughout their program has paid particular emphasis on safety procedures, but I think we should point out that uh, this particular space shuttle, the Challenger, is not equipped uh, to the same configuration as the Columbia. In effect, uh, NASA officials uh, have indicated uh, some concern that uh, should a situation like this develop, that uh, astronauts would not have a safety valve or, or some safety release. In this particular case, uh, as we know at this point, none of them have survived. And in fact, Lloyd, there may not have been a mechanism for them to survive an explosion at that particular point in the mission. Well, uh, there was some concern earlier or that, that there was a possibility of, uh, of uh, a shoot, um, an escape shoot, but uh, we saw something falling uh, through the sky, but apparently it was not that. It was one of the uh, rescue helicopters um, on its way, and someone was um, getting out of a helicopter to get down into that area. Uh, so, so far as we know at this stage, and this is one of the problems at this, uh, this time in this particular flight, so far as we know, there is no indication that um, anybody has been found yet. There's no indication that any debris has been found. Now to Ottawa and Prime Minister Mulroney. Prime Minister is on his way out. There's the microphone in place for him. He's going to make a statement. Uh, this is right in front the of the nation. House of Commons, uh, Lloyd. Right. Uh, in the foyer, the lobby of the Commons in Ottawa. And uh, we can expect that uh, any moment uh, he will be here, perhaps along with uh, his aides and uh, external affairs minister Joe Clark in the background, no doubt, uh, to say something about this tragedy. Canada has a very Space important program. role to play. Uh, well, um, we hear now that uh, the prime minister is there, Lloyd. Well, apparently not. Uh, another <laughs> another short delay. As I was going to say, Canada does play a vital role in the uh, space uh, shuttle program. The Canada arm, of course, has been very effective uh, in past missions, and uh, Canadian experts uh, were looking forward to uh, increasing their role in future shuttle missions. Uh, we've already named another Canadian astronaut, and uh, he was going to take part in some significant experiments uh, that were uh, tied into Canadian research and development. So Canada, of course, has a vital interest in the program. 
Yes, that uh, second after that was uh, due to go up, uh, I believe uh, that's been delayed as well, but he was due to go up again uh, uh, last October, but uh, uh, that will undoubtedly be another few months. However, um, Prime Minister Mulroney, who uh, will be making this statement very shortly, uh, is one person who has uh, been intimately involved with the uh, space program because um, when uh, Mark Garneau uh, lifted off uh, last year, uh, the Mulroney government uh, at that time had just uh, come into office and Tom Sidden, the new uh, science minister, was down there with us as we uh, broadcast the liftoff of the spacecraft from Cape Canaveral with Mark Garneau on board. And uh, Prime Minister Mulroney at that point was uh, all over the place uh, sending congratulations. So uh, he has been one who has uh, seen the development of the uh, Canadian space program come to fruition in the sense that uh, we've had more involvement in it um, over the last couple of years. Lloyd, perhaps at this point, while we do have some time before the Prime Minister arrives, uh, maybe we could recap for viewers. Here is the Prime Minister. Okay. I have uh, just spoken with the American ambassador, uh, Mr. Niles, to convey on behalf of the Canadian government and the people of Canada our great grief at the tragedy that has just struck the United States. It's a terrible loss uh, in uh, remarkably tragic circumstances. And I have conveyed on behalf of all Canadians and on behalf of the government our genuine condolences at this uh, overwhelming loss. Je viens tout juste de parler à son excellence l'ambassadeur des États-Unis, M. Niles, afin de lui transmettre nos condoléances les plus sincères suite à cette tragédie uh, monumentale, cette perte de vie uh, si tragique uh, de jeunes Américains uh, aujourd'hui. Uh, C'est vraiment une tragédie uh, uh, inoubliable. Et je tenais en votre nom et au nom de tous les Canadiens de transmettre euh, nos regrets, nos condoléances les plus sincères auprès de l'administration, euh, les familles, les euh, éprouvées par cette tragédie. Est-ce que vous avez eu l'occasion de voir des images de l'explosion, M. le Premier ministre? Je viens tout juste de le voir. J'étais au Conseil des ministres. On me transmis une note. J'ai avisé mes collègues et j'ai sorti puis j'ai vu... Euh, Euh, sur cassette, euh, la tragédie, puis euh, j'étais profondément bouleversé, attristé. Euh, pas plus tard que je pense dimanche, en fin de journée, je regardais, je travaillais avec les enfants, euh, et puis j'ai ouvert la télévision pour regarder le début du Super Bowl, et puis j'ai vu une émission de, une interview à la télévision américaine de cette euh, jeune euh, euh, institutrice américaine qui s'apprêtait, elle était en bicyclette. Puis elle donnait une interview euh, au sujet de, de son espoir pour les prochains jours. Et puis je l'avais tel, trouvé tellement attrayante et euh, intelligente dans son, ses commentaires. Puis de le voir aujourd'hui euh, perdu comme ça, c'est vraiment une tragédie énorme euh, pour les États-Unis puis pour sa famille. Technical difficulties the program has had and the tragedy today. Well, no, I, I was just saying in French the uh, on Sunday when I saw on television the uh, this uh, uh, sparkling young uh, school teacher from the United States who was the first civilian and uh, how what a delightful person she seemed to be and she was being interviewed as she was driving along on a bike and it it seemed to me that that was the the best thing about it how natural she was and how enthusiastic she was. And what a wonderful representative of the American people she, she seemed to be. And uh, that spoke of the, the tremendous opportunities uh, uh, for space. And uh, while it has the, the overwhelming tragedies such as the one we've seen today, I don't think it ought to uh, discourage us from participating uh, in this great adventure. It's, uh, it's, one of the, it's one of the great degrees of sadness that that uh, great initiatives are often uh, unfortunately affected by this kind of tragedy. Sir, when is Cabinet going to make up its mind on uh, participation in the space station? Well, that's, an, that, that's in, in the hopper, in the normal sense of business, and will be uh, decided upon when it's brought forward for, for a definitive resolution. It's supposed to be this month, sir. Will it be? Or? Well, you have a greater sense of the Cabinet agenda than I do. Uh, my information was a little later than that, but when it comes forward, it'll be resolved. Thank you. 
Merci. Non, euh, nous, nous, nous considérons que euh, c'est une euh, cette participation est fondamentale à, à l'épanouissement scientifique de notre pays. Et nous avons déjà joué un rôle là-dedans, puis nous allons continuer. These are brave, truly brave people. These men and women are, are deserving of our deepest admiration. And of course, we've had a Canadian in this kind of experience. It gives you an idea of how truly courageous they are. As I say, how I, I was just sitting there with the kids on Sunday and watching this uh, young lady being interviewed on television on a bicycle and how natural it seemed and what a spectacular adventure she was going on. She was as delightful as you could imagine. And she seemed so enthusiastic, I suppose, just the same way you and I would be if we were going to undertake this kind of a magnificent uh, adventure. And yet how, how ephemeral it all was. And that's a, in, a measure of her braveness and uh, her courage. And uh, in my conversation with uh, Ambassador Niles, I asked him to convey to the administration and to their families the genuine sense of loss of Canadians, because we're so close to it. We've been a part of it. And uh, we, they're not only neighbors, but they're friends and in many ways family. And when we see this happen, it's very much as if it happened to, to us. And so I asked the ambassador to please be in touch with their families on behalf of the government, the people of Canada, to say how, how, how badly we all feel at this terrible tragedy. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Well, that was uh, Prime Minister Brian Mulroney in Ottawa speaking live, expressing uh, what he called a genuine sense of loss for the uh, disaster that has fallen the uh, Space Shuttle Challenger this morning, shortly after liftoff from Cape Canaveral. Look. And wanting to uh, send condolences to all crew members. And uh, we have word uh, from one source at this point, Dave, that um, all have been apparently killed. Uh, now, um, that's uh, just one report that's uh, from Associated Press, but it's the first word we've had that uh, it's expected that all aboard are dead. No, no more than anyone else knows. So it's a reaction? terrible tragedy. Well, just enormous tragedy and... and uh, what does this mean for this, this special... Great concern for the families of people. Uh, horrible feeling on all of that. Well, I think it's way too early to know that. I mean, it's been an extraordinarily, you know, viable program, and this is just a tragic thing, so I've, I really don't have any detail on it, the except the motion. I've been, saw, saw the president, I was in there to help tell him about it, and then went in afterward to see him, and his you know, concerns are the same for the families and everybody else involved in all of this. Well, as just as I've described, with great concern for the families and the, and the, the um, you know, not, not uh, no, no specific things on that. While Vice President Bush is speaking, uh, we are seeing live pictures here of the recovery area. Some of the uh, rescue ships and helicopters are now on the scene attempting to find pieces of the wreckage from the shuttle. We understand from early reports, Lloyd, that the uh, wreckage uh, from the crash is strewn over quite a considerable area. However, it is within uh, the Cape Canaveral range, so there were a variety of uh, uh, rescue, uh, variety of rescue craft on the water, and as we saw earlier, some uh, paramedics were actually parachuted into the scene to see if there were, in fact, any survivors. The uh, crash uh, site uh, now under close surveillance, but uh, so far from NASA, at least uh, through us, uh, no word of any survivors. Uh, we understand that parts of the spacecraft have fallen in this area, which is 28.64 um, north latitude and 80.28 degrees west longitude, which is just a few nautical miles off Cape Canaveral. And the ships and helicopters race to the area immediately, many of them now on the scene, we should be getting some results there as to just uh, what their findings will be within the next couple of moments. At this moment, um, there is no optimism that anyone on board survived. Uh, one uh, space one uh, news agency rather 
is saying that uh, all the astronauts have been killed. Uh, that's all seven, including the uh, teacher who was on board, Krista McAuliffe. Uh, Vice President Bush was uh, saying what others have said before him this morning, uh, including President Reagan and Prime Minister Mulroney. There is great concern uh, across the United States and throughout the world at this moment for the members of the families. Um, condolences have been, have been expressed to them by Prime Minister Mulroney, and uh, there is uh, still no indication as to just what the cause of this accident was. You heard Gene Cernan talking a few moments ago, <coughs> and he indicated that uh, that uh, external fuel tank, while it does a terrific job, it is also very powerful and uh, can cause hazards in space if not everything comes off as it should. Uh, and um, apparently at the time of separation of the external fuel tank, a uh, little more than a minute, about a minute, 15 seconds into the flight. That was when this explosion took place, and we saw that, uh, that plume it's very, of smoke. It's a, the, it's excuse clearly me, Dave, a crucial the parents time. of um, Christina McAuliffe are, um, I believe, available to us now on picture, at least, uh, watching the liftoff this morning. There we are. This is from Cape Canaveral. in the Space Shuttle Challenger. Mr. and Mrs. McAuliffe, parents of daughter Christine, watching the liftoff of Challenger about an hour and a half ago at Cape Canaveral as their daughter became the uh, first civilian to go in space. Krista McAuliffe said she hoped that the, uh, she could humanize the technology of the space age mother who uh, just a few days ago talked about uh, how her daughter was always enthusiastic about uh, scientific things and uh, said how enthusiastic she was as a teacher that uh, her life was in teaching um, just an emotional moment there and uh, moments of tears of joy at that stage for a successful liftoff and her the, the emotion of her daughter being on that flight uh, we don't know just um, what has happened to those people uh, at the Cape at this moment. Obviously, they've dispersed. Those pictures were taped earlier. That was at the time of the liftoff. Lloyd, this is not... Uh, uh, Pamela Wallen is standing by in Ottawa. Dave, uh, she may be able to uh, bring some perspective to us from uh, the Ottawa scene and the reaction there to this disaster. Good morning, Pamela. Good morning, Lloyd. We did, of course, just a few moments ago hear from the Prime Minister who emerged from a high-powered cabinet meeting. He had been locked up with some of his cabinet colleagues while this whole event, tragic event, unfolded. He did come forward and make a statement. He described uh, this morning's event as a monumental tragedy. He had called the American ambassador to uh, express his concern for the families and friends of, of those of the seven who are aboard the Space Shuttle Challenger. He also took the opportunity this morning to comment on the fact that Canada, the federal cabinet, the government is now considering Canada's participation in a U.S. space station proposal at a cost of, of course, multi-millions of dollars. And the Prime Minister insisted, while no final decision has been made, that this incident this morning should not discourage people, should not discourage Canada from participating in what will be a very important and ongoing and continuing space program. So he did reassure everyone on that score. We have also been in touch with the National Research Council. Uh, Dr. Carl Deutsch, who is head of the Canadian Astronaut Program, is of course there at headquarters. They are uh, in a meeting discussing the implications of all this, and I'm sure uh, watching it uh, along with all other Canadians at this point. Uh, one of the backup ast astronauts of the Canadian program is there as well, Bob Thursk. He was the Canadian backup for Mark Garneau, of course, Canada's first astronaut who went off into space on October 4th, 1984. Mark Garneau, as you may know, is in Houston today watching the, the whole launch uh, of the Challenger, so he is not in Ottawa. Steve McLean, who has been selected as Canada's second Canadian uh, for the shuttle program, is in Quebec today. Everybody is trying to, of course, contact him. He will be the next man up, a, a young 31-year-old laser physicist uh, who has been involved in the program since 1983, studied at MIT, and, and he, of course, described his chances to become Canada's second astro astronaut as a fulfillment of a dream. And uh, we have heard so much from Mark Garneau in, in the past couple of years about how important that was. So I think even given the very serious and tragic proportions uh, of the event earlier today, 
with the challenger, Canada will proceed at this point uh, with negotiations with Washington to participate, continue to participate fully and directly in the space program, including the participation of Canadian astronauts. Well, Pamela, as you recall, there was one previous accident, uh, right. mentioned it earlier, in 1967, and there was an intensive investigation of that. Uh, there was a delay for a long period of time. Uh, that was the fire on the launch pad in which three astronauts were killed in 1967. Right. But things continued after that. Uh, as a matter of fact, the feeling was that uh, the space program improved technically mm -hmm. after that point. So there is really no reason why uh, there should be a delay in the development of American or Canadian space technology at this stage. That seems to be the sense we're getting, that these meetings today are, are obvious. Uh, the Canadian particip participants in the space program at the NRC will be studying this as are all officials are around the world uh, at this point. But again, uh, words of encouragement that we must carry on despite the tragedy. Thank you very much, Pamela. Mm -hmm. Uh, you'll be standing by there to bring us any further word from uh, Ottawa, I gather. And, uh, Indeed, we will. Prime Minister Mulroney has, uh, has already made his statement, of course. Um, what is, the, um, is happening, just as a matter of fact, while you're still there in the Commons? Uh, do you know? Are they, um, are they pausing to take uh, this into account, or are they continuing well, on this, with business? Well, we will probably see this this afternoon at 2 o'clock, uh, Lloyd, when the MPs gather uh, for the daily question period. There is a, a time allotted at the beginning of that question period for statements. Uh, in light of special circumstances. No doubt we will find a statement today. As I said, most of the, the parties, including the, the Conservative Party, are in special meetings this morning in Cabinet and Caucus, the Prime Minister meeting with his uh, priorities, Planning and Priorities Committee, where I'm sure this was discussed. He then went off to his office for a few minutes while he called Ambassador Niles, the American representative here. And I uh, assume that there'll be other statements forthcoming from John Turner, the leader of the opposition, from Ed Broadbent, leader of the New Democrats. And we will see that this afternoon, I'm sure, at around 2 o'clock Eastern Time. Thank you, Pamela. We understand that NASA rescue teams are just now uh, being allowed to go into the area where the shuttle apparently fell, uh, where it came down in that uh, corkscrew kind of smoke plume uh, at about... Um, uh, what time was that, Dave? About uh, 11... 11... 11.39 was 11 the actual 39. List actually come down into the ocean and uh, that's why the report now from NASA that it took some time but they were in place we understand to uh, watch for any of this debris coming down. Um, we should point out that uh, to some of our viewers who just joined us Lloyd that they may have been somewhat surprised by all this talk of the weather and yet uh, they were searing, seeing clear blue skies uh, around Cape Canaveral. That's very true, but it was also very cold overnight. So cold, in fact, that we have a report that on the actual launch pad this morning, there were icicles, about some of them as uh, long as two and a half meters in length. It was very cold this morning uh, for Florida. And uh, as a result of that, there was a delay while NASA officials uh, decided to de-ice the actual launch pad itself before they would allow this launch to go ahead. From all indications, the ice uh, pallets had very little effect uh, on any of this. Uh, what seems to be speculation at this moment surrounds the uh, external fuel tank and just whether it managed to separate effectively. And apparently, uh, as Gene Cernan said earlier, had the astronauts on board had some kind of warning that there was a problem with the separation of the external fuel tank, they could have lifted that shuttle off there. Uh, it is just like an airplane. They could have lifted it off and uh, gone back and landed at Cape Canaveral, Florida, because the shuttle uh, is designed to be uh, eminently adaptable to all kinds of situations. But in this case, there was no warning. Everybody was taken totally by surprise. And for those of you just joining us now, we are going to recapitulate the events of the last couple of hours, the tragic events of the last couple of hours, which took place at Cape Canaveral, Florida. The Space Shuttle Challenger exploded in a fireball shortly after taking off in freezing temperatures today. There were fears, there are fears, that all seven astronauts have been killed in the worst disaster ever to befall America's space program. Now this is the liftoff. A six-day mission, seven people aboard, including schoolteacher Krista McAuliffe. Explosion occurred about a minute into the flight. We are watching here a replay now, as we watch it go up, you will see the separation of some of the booster rockets, and then that enormous explosion, and then the corkscrew-like effect as the spaceship, the shuttle, begins to fall to the ground. Now that um, external booster tank, the huge tank in the center there, 
Um, could be the one that caused the problem, although that is only speculation at this stage. It certainly is a very crucial time, though, uh, Lloyd, in the launch of uh, any space shuttle. That's a particular point. It's certainly a small loss to the miles uh, in terms of getting it safely into orbit. This is also, we should point out, the uh, point at which... Engine throttling up, three engines down, 104 percent. Challenger, go and throttle up. And uh, there's fuel pumps, etc., from the upper atmosphere. And there we see the explosion just after NASA told the astronauts aboard the shuttle Challenger to go at full throttle up. And there you see the strange configurations of the, the smoke and uh, the burning shuttle. This is the 10th flight for the shuttle Challenger. And again, the first time there has been an accident of this type uh, after the launch from the Cape. Let's go now to the center after a delay of about two hours this morning, and that's the result. And at this stage, rescue ships are in the area. We're going to um, take a look at this in slow motion now. You'll be seeing pictures like this uh, throughout the day, and this is uh, just what happened in slow motion. We can't see exactly what happened, of course, because um, the, our, our view of the external fuel tank is somewhat shielded there. But Lo Lloyd, there was uh, some a report earlier that uh, experts at NASA saw the orange ball. There was a, a small flame that erupted just moments before, just seconds before the actual explosion itself. But as you can see, when those uh, two highly flamm flammable ingredients uh, in that uh, huge tank that forms the basis of the, of the launch itself uh, met, uh, the result, a, an ominous explosion in space. We hadn't heard anything about problems uh, with the external fuel tank, had we? There was uh, no mention of, uh, of anything happening there. There were a few. What were the... Uh, you were following it this morning, I gather, and there were a few technical delays, but they were of a minor nature. These were, they were uh, the usual glitches, uh, Lloyd, that uh, accompany uh, any pre-launch countdown. The uh, NASA officials trying to be very careful, of course, if uh, in this case this morning there was a faulty meter. Uh, mm -hmm. regarding one of those tanks, but uh, they checked that out and were satisfied that, uh, in fact, they were reading it correctly. I think we should point out, too, that uh, the Americans have had a very successful program up to this point. Uh, they have had 56 American man-in-space missions that have all been carried off successfully. As we mentioned just a few minutes ago, it was only in 1967 in the Apollo program that uh, three astronauts died tragically, but that was on the launch pad. This is the first tragedy that has befallen the space program in the air, as it were. And uh, all we can do, of course, at this point is speculate. NASA officials are being uh, very, very quiet in terms, or mum, in terms of what they are uh, telling uh, us about what may have happened.